Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've been getting a lot of neat gadgets from Amazon lately, and the other day this came in. This is a little TV tuner that works with just about any HDMI display, and it will tune in high definition content, although it only works on the ATSC 1.0 standard. But it's not very expensive. It has a built-in DVR. You can actually record onto a USB stick that's plugged into it. And it doesn't require any apps nor the internet in order for it to work. So I thought some of you might find this of interest. So we're going to take a look at it right now. Now I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this inexpensive TV tuner is all about. Now the price point on this thing comes in at around $20. If you have a television that was made in the last 15 years or so, you likely don't need this because your TV has a tuner built in already that can pick up digital broadcasts. However, the one thing that this does add to the mix is the ability to record without a lot of complexity, and I'll show you that feature in a minute. The best use case I would say for this would be somebody who has a computer monitor and wants to be able to watch television on it. You just plug in the HDMI here and you will be good to go. The hardware is very simple on this. You've got your coax connector there for your antenna. On the uh, bottom here, you have your power cord. This is a barrel connector that goes out to a USB connection. They do give you a power adapter in the box. This USB port here is actually for its infrared blaster. So the re included remote control here works over infrared. And so what you do is put this thing behind your TV and then put the infrared blaster in front of it so that you can uh, operate the device because everything operates on here and not through another app. On the other side, you've got your HDMI output. This will output 1080p but it will also do 720p and 480, and it can also output interlaced as well if you're interested in that. And then right here, you've got your USB port, and this is where you pop in your USB storage device. I've got this one that I picked up at a trade show a couple of years ago, and it's been working just fine for recording content. You can also load up video files on here and play them back through this thing as well, and I'll demo all of that for you in a minute. What I want to do real quick, though, is get this thing on my desk here booted up so you can see what some of the menus look like, and then we'll take a look and see how it works in operation. All right, so I've got it booted up right now. One thing I wanted to show you here before we dive into its features is that the infrared receiver that you need in order for the remote to work has an LED display on board that's pretty bright in a dark room, and you can't turn it off. It is very old school like that. It reminds me of my old Zenith TV that had the channel indicator next to the picture tube. So this is just something you have to live with here, unfortunately. What you see on screen here is what channel it is currently tuned to. So once you get to know your channel numbers, you'll be able to browse around there pretty quickly. Now a little earlier, I hooked it up upstairs to my big antenna, and you can see what my quick channel flipping looks like. One of the nice things about this is that you can actually go through the channels relatively quickly. The uh, Non-HD channels do tune a little bit quicker, but the high-definition ones were not all that sluggish either. It actually tuned pretty quickly, and you can use the remote here just to go up and down to browse through the channels. You also get a quick channel list when you push the OK button down in the center, so you can quickly browse through a list of channels and select the one that you want. Now, you can also use the number pad to type in channels directly. The only problem I have in my area is that channel 26, for example, has a bunch of subchannels on it, and I haven't figured out a way to type in the dash to get to the dash 3, for example. So normally what I would do is just type in 26, and that will bring me to 26.1, and I can browse up from there. Now, while you're tuned to a channel, if you push the info button twice, you will get a screen that shows you what's on the channel that you're currently watching, what is coming up, what frequency it is tuned to, along with a signal strength indicator. Now, if you push the EPG button, you will get an electronic program guide. It pulls this information down over the air because there is no internet connection here. It's not the greatest. You don't get a grid or anything, but you can browse through the channels that you have access to and see what is coming up in the near future. 
Now, when you hit the record button here, it will start recording onto the USB drive if you have one installed. It kind of works like an old school VCR in that way. One bug I've encountered on this is that I couldn't figure out how to stop the recording unless I moved the channel off the one I was watching and then hit the record button to stop it. So there are some glitches in here that perhaps they could fix with firmware updates, but unfortunately they don't tell you where to get those firmware updates to install the fixes. Now you can also schedule recordings in a couple of different ways. One is to go into the electronic program guide, browse a channel and scroll down to something that is airing in the near future. You can select that show and begin a recording process. You can also set up recurring recordings if you want. There's also a way just to do an old school VCR manual control here as well. If you push the timer button on the remote, you can go ahead and add in a schedule manually if you want by setting the parameters that you see here. Now to play content back, it's pretty basic on this one. What you do is hit the PVR button here. And what that will do is bring you to a list of what was recorded previously. I'll pull up this recording from my CBS affiliate real quick here and we can play it back. Initially, it puts the video in a small window here, as you can see, but then when you hit the red button, it will make it full screen. The video quality here looks great. Nothing to complain about here. The HD channels come in just fine. It will also work with closed captioning. So if I hit the subtitle button here, you'll see those closed captions appear on screen, as you can see right there. So it looks like it's able to do pretty much what you would expect out of a very basic recording mechanism here. Again, very similar to an old school VCR. Now I also put some of my own media on the card as well. And if I hit the exit button here, I'm brought to a menu where I can play back music like MP3 files, photos, or look at some movies that I've got stored on this stick. And I put them in a folder called Home Movies. And here is a video I shot when I was on vacation in Hawaii long before I had kids and could easily get places. And if I go here to the full screen mode here, you can see it plays things back just fine. So kind of a rudimentary media player in addition to being a DVR, pretty cool stuff. Nothing spectacular here though, as far as its interface as you can see, but it's functional. And I kind of like the fact that it doesn't require an internet connection or anything else to work. You just plug it into a compatible display and you're off and running. There is a menu here for some configuration that you can do, but there's not much. Uh, you can have it run at different resolutions depending on what display that it's plugged into. I have the aspect ratio here set to auto, but if you were having trouble getting a four x three image to work properly, you could set it here in the picture menu or just hit the aspect button here while you're watching TV. Now there is an option to update the firmware on this thing, but you have to download it from them directly. And I don't even know where to go to do that because all they give you is a Gmail address for contacting the company. So this is definitely a very generic TV tuner. I wouldn't be surprised if there are a number of them with different brand names that you'll find across the Amazon ecosystem there. But I have to say it actually works pretty well. The tuning quality is very, very good on it. One of the faster tuners that I have tested over the last couple of months. The recording function, while rudimentary, does work. Again, it reminds me a lot of a VHS VCR in its functionality, but it'll record stuff and it records it pretty much as a straight digital copy of what it picked up over the air. And of course, the price point is pretty good on this too. So if you wanted something simple for a boat or an RV or something, just something you can plug into a monitor and get it working, this will certainly get you there, provided you hook an antenna up to it, of course and I was very pleased with what I got out of this and it far exceeded expectations. I do believe you can program the remote to work with your television also. So it does have some universal remote capabilities on board too. So altogether, a pretty neat little device here if you were looking for a very simple tuner. Just don't expect too much out of it. That's gonna do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.